You want to know what's been going on around here? I'll tell you what's been going on around here. Communism, that's what. As of late, we've been seeing a bunch of old games getting fresh remakes. Popular and prestigious titles like Final Fantasy VII and Shadow of the Colossus have gotten this treatment to much acclaim. This time around, it's Destroy All Humans' turn for a remake. In this particular case, it's similar to what was done with Shadow of the Colossus as it's closer to a premium remaster rather than any sort of reimagining as seen with Final Fantasy VII or Resident Evil 2. It's a remake that's completely faithful to the original, which can be a good thing like what was done with the first Resident Evil. Since Destroy All Humans has never really been all that big of a franchise, it's quite a surprise to see that it's getting a remake at all. Personally, I've always had a bit of a soft spot for the original. It was probably my introduction to open world games. However, even back then as a teen, I had my issues with it. While ambitious remakes like Final Fantasy VII's make major changes to the original's formula, Destroy All Humans just makes minor improvements from what already existed. As mentioned before, there are examples of this type of remake doing extremely well, like with the previously mentioned Resident Evil 1 remake. However, with this remake, there just doesn't seem to be much of a point. Sure, there are a few quality of life improvements and an updated presentation, but it's essentially the same old game we got back in 2005. To top it off, the original can still be digitally purchased on the PS4, so accessibility doesn't really factor into why the game is getting remade. I mean, sure, now it can be played on modern consoles and on Steam, but it then leads on to the next question. Who actually wanted this? Even though I have some vaguely fond memories of playing the original, it never stood out as a game that really resonated with me. In some ways, the original just kinda of felt like a whatever game. The kind of title you pick up to kill time and mess around in. I mean, the PS2 is easily one of the best consoles ever, and out of all those games that could have been remade, they chose this. It's kinda of ridiculous to me, but whatever, on to the review. Originally released in 2005, Destroy All Humans is a sort of hybrid between GTA and Ratchet and Clank. With a sort of open world approach and combat similar to that of Ratchet and Clank, Destroy All Humans delivers a passable experience despite its age showing with regards to game design. The title stars Crypto, a bloodthirsty alien clone out to save his predecessor, who's been captured by the US military. Supporting Crypto is Pox, a scientist that assigns Crypto objectives and offers support in the form of upgrades. The highlight of the game has always been its wacky humor. Destroy All Humans is doused in a heavy comedic tone filled to the brim with movie references and juvenile humor. Surprisingly, the cartoony voice acting has aged quite well, especially considering the time the original was released. The two aliens have excellent banter with one another and ultimately lift the game from a mostly forgettable title to that funny game with aliens in it. Their voice work brings the humor to life even after all these years. There's a time for thought, and there's a time for action, and this is one of those times. Ultimately, it was a wise choice to keep the voice work from the original. Mechanically, it takes clear inspiration from GTA with its open world approach, mission based level design, shoehorned in vehicular sections, and the ability to free roam within moderately sized locales. The game is comprised of six areas, each separated by a minute long loading sequence. Oftentimes, the game delivers its humor with the ridiculous nature of its missions. Crypto has a flying saucer that's used in missions to destroy buildings and cause mayhem. Sadly, the saucer doesn't appear to be very powerful, and mechanically, it still feels half-baked after all these years. Seriously, it just doesn't feel like it has much force behind it, and the gameplay hardly adds much to the experience besides the catharsis of making big buildings blow up. With regards to on-foot combat, it's a pretty straightforward third-person shooter affair with a small set of wacky guns. Notably, it would have been nice to have a few new weapons in this remake, as it often felt like there wasn't much variety. It's a clear oversight from the original that should have been improved upon in the remake. You can hide behind the faithful to the original argument all you want, but I'll just have to note that it doesn't detract from the actual point that there's a lack of weapon diversity. Anyway, the safest approach for me was to spam the Zapomatic, which has regenerating ammo and does decent damage. Though it is possible to get ammo for the other two useful weapons, it's a bit tedious and not worth doing. I'd often just save the better weapons for crucial moments, further restricting the experience to a strictly zapping experience. Visually, 
The updated graphics lack polish and remain one of the weaker aspects of the game. The original wasn't much of a looker to begin with, and this remake doesn't really improve it all that much. Though character models have obviously been improved on a graphical level, the human models often appear bland and generic. Crypto and Pox sure do look nice though. A lot of the environments and characters appear plasticky in a way that's unique to the Unreal 4 engine. Regardless, it's still a definite step forward from the original's messy, low-fidelity visuals. The remake essentially makes the game more playable. It adds a lock-on feature and the ability to use Psychic Mind abilities while shooting. The former is not all that useful as most weapons don't require much aiming to begin with, while the latter tones down the difficulty further as you can keep shooting while extracting brains to heal up. The most notable addition is the ability to skate, which vastly improves the movement and is probably my favorite addition to the remake. It speeds up traversal in a game that heavily relies on getting from place to place. At the end of the game, there's a major difficulty spike that comes out of nowhere with comparatively tough boss fights. It forced me to grind for DNA to power up my saucer for a substantially less tedious time. Before that, I would rarely ever invest in my saucer, because the saucer missions were always so tame that there was never really a point. Admittedly, I did enjoy the final on-foot boss fight as it provided some thrill to a mostly unchallenging experience. However, destroying humans never really prepares players for this type of fight, as enemies are usually just bullet fodder. When I first played the original in the distant past, I struggled with the final boss and I can imagine other players doing the same in this remake. The biggest issue with the remake is the fact that it doesn't really change much from the unremarkable original. It's a modernized version of a game that was never really that good to begin with, ultimately hindering the remake from moving past the original in any significant way. The gameplay is hardly improved considering the core loop never really goes beyond the standard GTA sandbox and mission structure. Along with that, even the original Ratchet and Clank significantly surpasses it with regards to third-person shooting mayhem. That's a game with better upgrades, cooler weapons, and is just a solid game all around. And it came out more than two years before the original Destroy All Humans. The original developers had a lot they could have drawn from at that point, and they just didn't. It's a case of trying to do too much echoing the modern day AAA design philosophy, which is a major detractor for me. Ultimately, the only real draw factor to the game is its comedy, which blends wacky alien hijinks with its quirky setting of America in the 1950s. A mostly visual remake, Destroy All Humans brings a dubious cult classic onto modern consoles and PC, with most of the same issues it had to begin with. It's a clear example of lost potential as the original title was never all that well regarded and thoroughly reworking the gameplay could have massively improved the previously passable title. As it is now, this remake doesn't do enough to lift the title from mediocrity. Aside from its updated visuals, the one new mission, and slightly tweaked gameplay, it's a game that still doesn't have much going for it besides the comedy, which has thankfully been kept intact. Though the remake is definitely the definitive way to play the game, I still find it difficult to really recommend Destroy All Humans. Thanks for watching the review. If you enjoyed it, please like the video and consider subscribing to my channel. I wrote the original review for Darkstation, and a review copy was provided. If you want more, here are some of my other videos. Anyway, I'll see you all next time when I review Final Fantasy VII Remake, featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series.